All right, welcome back to all of the students uh, of the Christ. We are so very uh, excited uh, to be with you guys here tonight. Thank you so very much um, for your patience. Uh, am I coming in nice and clear, everyone? I just want to make sure uh, that the bishop is coming nice and clear. There you are. Thank you so much, everyone. I will not be this late again. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, I am back uh, after two weeks of my apostolic sabbatical. Great to see you, Pastor Deborah Watts, my daughter in Christ. Great to see you, Pastor Sam Jr., my son in Christ, all of my sons and daughters in Christ. You belong to Christ. You don't belong to me. You belong to Christ and Christ alone. Thank you so much, Pastor Renee. And um, I am rested. I am ready to go. Let's go straight into the mind of God in prayer. Heavenly Father, send forth thy truth, for thy word is the truth. And Yeshua's holy name. Great to see you, uh, Pastor Jody Bird, my son in Christ. Uh, Pastor Rita, my daughter in Christ. Great to see you, Pastor Sippy. Uh, my daughter, let's go straight into the word, Pastor Catherine. Great to see you. Uh, are you happy uh, that the bishop is back? Put up those smiling faces if you are very happy to see the man of God back. I missed you guys. All right, let's go. Thank you so much, Pastor Alicia D. Smith. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. To the book of the beginnings called the Genesis. For some reason, I cannot get away from Genesis, and I will not want to get away from the Genesis. Called the Genetics of God, Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. My, my favorite as well, Pastor Sam, because to understand what is going on today, we have to go back into history uh, laying the foundation through the book of the gene genetics of God called the Genesis. Great to see you, Pastor Leslie, my daughter. All of you guys, Pastor Renee, Pastor Emma Noel, great to see you from the great nation of Canada. Genesis, and I'll give a shout out to the rest of you guys near the end of tonight's class. Great to see you, Pastor Claire. Isaac, I missed you guys in the name of Yeshua the Christ. Genesis chapter 5. Verses 1 going downward to verse number 5. Again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is Genesis chapter 5. My God, you talking about revelation. Uh, I'm telling you, it, 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 you better get your popcorn ready tonight. If you thought that the last series, the last couple of series was powerful, You've seen nothing yet. Great to see you, Pastor OKS, Big Rob. Great to see you, Pastor Big Rob X. Great to see you, Pastor uh, Down C. Kelly. Beautiful woman of God. Great to see you. My sons and daughters of Christ, pillars and strategies uh, of the truth. They are under the apostolic covering and government of the Global uh, Spiritual Revolution Media Group, Los Angeles, New York, uh, with Apostle Ty Kemp and Apostle Carlotta Kemp. All right, great to see you, Pastor Colleen. Oh, my God. Great, great, great to see you. I thank God for your wisdom. Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, the key verse that I want everyone to fully concentrate on tonight is the gospel according to St. Matthew. Great to see you, Pastor Colin, my brother in Christ. Oh, my God. Uh, we would love for you to be here, Pastor Colin, uh, my brother in Christ, great friend of mine in Christ, a truther, a great man of God who is really the head of our minister there in Scotland, uh, the Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group Scotland. Great, great to see you, Pastor Colin and Pastor Sheila. Great to see you, my daughter. All right. Genesis chapter five, verses one to five. The key verse tonight that I want everyone to fully concentrate on is the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 to 5. Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, 
the key verse tonight from whence we shall receive the subject tonight is the gospel according to St. Matthew, uh, chapter number seven, verses three going down to verse number five. Hear ye the word of the Lord tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This is the book or the nature of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man. In the likeness of God may he him Male and female created he them and bless them and call their name Atom. When a man marries a woman, she takes on the man's last name and God called their name Atom. In the day when they were created, an atom lived, and I want you to get this because in nearly 45 years of global ministry, I never saw this until yesterday, Pastor Sam. Genesis chapter five, verse number three. And atom lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness. Adam was 130 years old when he begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. You have to understand, students, that the mind of God spoke to me yesterday, Pastor Greg, uh, Rick uh, Remington. Great to see you, Pastor Rick, my son, in Christ that the first 130 years of Adam's life, the twin brothers of Cain and Abel were not created in the image of Adam. Because as you notice in chapter five, verse three, Adam lived 130 years or he was 130 years old. When Adam became 130 years old, he begat a son in his own likeness after his own image, and the son's name was Seth. Seth replaces Abel. So if Seth is created in the image of Adam, what image was Cain and Abel, his two older brothers, created in? Uh, oh, my God. I, I never saw this before. Wait a minute now. I thought Cain and Abel were also in the image of Adam, and Cain's father was the serpent. God spoke to me, Pastor Sam. There you go, Pastor Sam. That... Since Seth, who took the place of Abel and was birthed through the seed of Adam in the woman Eve, the man was 130 years old when Seth was born, and Seth was created in the image and likeness of Adam. And since that is the case, what image was Cain and Abel created in? I'm going to say something radical along with Abel. It's Lucifer. I'll explain it later on. I'm telling you, oh, King, I'm telling you, Baba, this was heavy. This is revelatory knowledge. No son of Adam and Eve and no daughter of Adam and Eve was created in Adam's image until Adam was 130 years old. 
So since that is the case, what image was the two older brothers of Seth created in? Cain and Abel. Lucifer. Verse number four, in the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters. So any seed born from Seth onward are created in the image of Adam and any son or daughter created before Seth is created in, in the image of Lucifer. Allow me to explain that. Any child, any son or daughter that was birthed before Seth was actually in the image of the serpent. Cain and Abel, Cain, Abel, cannibal, cannibalism, spirit cooking. The Germanic interpretation for Cain is blood. The Germanic interpretation for Abel is crypt, bloods and crypts. So what image was Seth created in? His father. Every seed from Seth onward is in the image of Adam, the fallen Adam. Any son and daughter born before Seth were created in the image of the serpent. I will prove it later on. This is a radical revelation. Genesis chapter five, verse five, and all the days of Atom lived, that Adam lived, were 930 years and he died. And the only reason why that you and I have an age is because of our fallen state. In other words, pre-fall Adam was ageless. Post-fall Adam became an age. In the apostolic, we are ageless. But in our fallen state, we acquire the attachment of an age. Now, keep a marker there. I love teaching in Genesis. You can tell I'm fired up. I have not taught in two weeks. Genesis, we go from Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. And please, ladies and gentlemen, let's matriculate 4,000 plus years later in the gospel according to St. Matthew. There's a fresh anointing, Pastor Rick. I'm fresh tonight. There's, there's a fresh anointing. The gospel according to St. Matthew, quickly, chapter number seven. You better get everyone on the air tonight from Telegram, bitch, you. Okay, Gab, bitch, bitch, you. Okay, uh, the Patriot app from Facebook, Instagram, X, Twitter, and TikTok tonight. Now, Matthew, quickly, chapter number seven, verse number three. Genesis chapter number seven. Verse number three. The greatest teacher in history, the Christ taught, and why behold ist. The last three letters of the term beholdest is the acronym for established or establishment. And why behold ist? Or why are you beholding to the establishment? 
Thank you, Pastor Alexis. Thou, which is the acronym for the word thought. Thou, the moat, remote, reverse engineering. The term moat is also the name of a Masonic ritual. Christ was exposing secret societies. In Genesis chapter 7, verse 3, moat, remote, a remote location, the cremation of care, remote or moat is a Masonic ritual that is in thy brother's eye. The light of the body is the eye. But considerest not the beam or the splinter that is in thine own eye. The light of the body is the eye. Ah, so beam or splinter. Remember Morpheus said at the beginning of Matrix Part 1, a splinter in your mind. But consider us not the splinter. Christ is also exposing not just secret societies, but the global matrix. The beam of the splinter that is in thine own eye. Or oh, how wilt, in the term wilt, doesn't just signify an individual. The term wilt means to melt. Or oh, how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the remote viewing. The server cord astra projection or a Masonic ritual initiation called the moat. A divine eye and behold a beam or a splinter is in thine own eye or the light of the body is the eye. Verse five, thou hypocrite, Notice the first four letters of the term hypocrite is hypo, hypochondriac, hyperventilation, hippo, hypocrisy, hippopotamus, the demon of pride called behemoth that's in Job. Hippo, then the term crite, C-R-I-T-E. C-R-I-T-E, which means an initiation. First cast out the splinter of the matrix out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the remote viewing, the astral projection, the silver cord lining of demons out of your brother's eye. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Now, go. you've never heard of that interpretation. Now, go back to Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Let's tonight lay apostolic foundation after two weeks of my apostolic sabbatical and having to take care of a lot of business here in Los Angeles. Write this down, and it is very important, critically important for every one of you to take notes here tonight. The Ecclesiastical Mafia. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The Ecclesiastical Mafia post-colonization. The individual comes face to face 
with a conspiracy that's so monstrous, students, he or she cannot believe it exists. The mind of creation has not come to a realization of the evil which has been introduced into our midst. It rejects even the assumption that animalistic or human creatures could espouse a philosophy, a philosophical interpretation, which must ultimately destroy all that is good and decent. Let me tell you why you are here tonight. You are here tonight, students, because you know something. What you know, you cannot explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there is something wrong in this world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter, as Christ exposed, a beam in the mind of the system, driving the system mad. It is this feeling from the thought of Christ that has brought us here together tonight. Do you know what it is? Man, there's an anointing. It's called the global matrix. The matrix is everywhere. It, it is all around us. Even now, at this very present second, 118 billion people were born in history. We are down to 8.1 billion people. 13.7 billion years from Genesis 1 and 3 to Genesis 3 and 6, the fall of Adam. And from the fall of that third Adam, I you said it, you heard it correctly, the third Adam. The first Adam is the earth in Genesis 1 and 1. The second Adam is in Genesis 126 and 127. The third Adam is Genesis 2 and 7, radical teaching. From the fall of Adam, the third Adam, in Genesis 3 and 6, to now is 6,000 years. So that is a totality of 13 billion, 700 million, 6,000 years from Genesis 1 and 3 to now. That creation has experienced intergenerational trauma. Pastor Sam, there is an anointing I've never felt before on this level tonight. Intergenerational trauma. It is the intergenerational historical pain and historical trauma, which means... 118 billion people born in history were down to 8.1 billion who are now experiencing, except not you and I, unconscious grief. Not conscious grief, unconscious grief from unconscious pain and unconscious trauma that's been passed down from one generation to the next generation, one generation to the next generation due to forced relocation. 
Listen, black folk. Due to the forced displacement of the dispossession of land and through the force of a foreign language, a foreign dialect and a foreign accent called English, out of all 9,909 languages, some say more, some say less, the English language is the most cursed language in history. Ing, E-N-G, the establishment of England, leash the bounding of an animal. English. Thank you, Pastor Wally Tech. The cause of historical pain and trauma that has forced relocation, the displacement of a hundred million indigenous our Kibinonites. I'm not going to call them Africans because the term Africa is simply not the name of the original continent, Great Tizia Pastor Sharon Simmons. The name Africa came from a white Roman general, a man by the name of Leo Scipio Africanus, who defeated Hannibal in Carthage, which is present day Libya in Tanzania, and changed the name of the continent from Alkebulan, which is a Coptic word meaning the Garden of Eden, to Africanus, which is Africa today. 90 to 95% of the names of nations on the continent are not the true original names. 90 to 95% of every government, of every nation on which the deep state calls the African continent are named after some Roman, some Italian, some Portuguese, some Dutch, some Belgian, some Roman name. And for those of you who are Nigerians, the name Nigeria was named for your government and named for your nation by a white female British socialite by the name of Flora Shaw. Flora Shaw named your country Nigeria, and she was a major proponent of black eugenics. It gets deeper. The ecclesiastical mafia post-colonization. Stay there in Genesis chapter 5. We're laying foundation. The power of addiction in the diction to power. You got to understand, students, quickly. Don't make the mistake of just concentrating on the addiction, add, an additive, diction, dictionary words. But you first must get to the root of their pain which has conceived the trauma, which is given birth to their addiction. So the pain of 100 million people stolen from their land, language destroyed, dialect destroyed, accent destroyed, history destroyed, as high as 200 million people, which is also a global holocaust. There is short-term relief that produces long-term destruction. So the 
perpetuation, the continuance of intergenerational cycles of pain and trauma that still impacts not just Black America in the blank diaspora, but the entire world. Can I take my time tonight? The ecclesiastical mafia, Lord have mercy. The Lord said, I want you to use this topic, Bishop, the ecclesiastical mafia post-colonization. The matrix the splinter in your mind. During the impartation of the key text in Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 to 5, three key words, thank you, Pastor Simmons, that I want everyone to concentrate on in Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 to 5. Those words are moat, beam, and I. Moat, beam, and I. Let's start with the term moat. There are many manifestations of the term moat. It first represents an abstraction, somebody that is being distracted through a abstraction, moat, remote, distant, and cold, moat, suspended in time, from which you get the term suspension bound between your past, your present, and your future. That's moat, a suspension of time where one is also suspended or canceled in time. A conscious antiquity of separation, remote or moat, where people only want to worship Christ through a long distance relationship. They don't want an intimate relationship with Christ they want a remote, long distance relationship. I want to keep going to the clubs. Men wants to keep sleeping with women. Women wants to be wants to be uh, sleeping with men, not even married. That's not apostolicity. That's a remote viewing of yourself through treating God like he is a long distance relationship. The moat in your brother's eye or remote controlled, the silver cord lining of witchcraft through astral projection. And there is a Masonic secret society out of England who wrote the historical Masonic manuscripts called the Hillowell, H-E-L-L-I-W-E-L-L, H-E-L-L-I-W-E-L-L. The Hillowell Regis manuscript this, that goes back to the 1500s and what is now called England. And this is where you get the term Halloween. I am going to say something radical. Prior to the 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, the term Halloween was not proclaimed by Christ. The term Hallowed is a Masonic term. 
So what the Vatican, these Vatican devils did through Constantine and his homosexual lover, Pope Sylvester, and the 365 bishops of Rome. You know, this is so heavy, uh, Pastor Colleen. The term Hallowed was not in the scriptures, Pastor Ray Parham, prior to the 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, the creation of a secret society called Christianity. The term Christian, I'm going to go through this again, means a tax bracket code. The Emperor Claudius over Rome, who was also the governor over Antioch 2,000 years ago in Acts 11, 26, he wanted to come up with a tax bracket scheme to tax the body of the apostolic from Acts chapter 2. That's right, Pastor Day. Now it's a 501c3. Same demon, different name. So the term Christian, there is not one single scripture, not one, where Christ commanded you and I to call ourselves Christian. It's a tax bracket code, but there is a second interpretation for the term Christian. It comes from the Roman Latin term, Cretan. C-R-E-T-I-N. Cretan, there you go, Pastor Rick, means imbecile. Cretan means stupid. Cretan means an idiot. So nowhere in history did Christ tell you to say that you are a Christian. Neither did Christ tell you that you are a tax bracket code, and neither did Christ tell you that you are a Cretan, a Christian. There you go, Pastor Arita. You're not an imbecile. You're not stupid. You're not an idiot. That term Christian came out of Rome. Well, what are we, Bishop? We are of the apostolic body of the Christ from Acts chapter 2. You are a child of the Christ. You are a man of the Christ, brothers. You are the woman, a, the daughter of the Christ sisters. The ecclesiastical mafia post-colonization. Then the term Christianity. The term anity is the Vatican term, meaning to be Vaticanized. That's why many of these pastors today are wearing collars and robes and cassocks and rings and shoes out of Rome. Christ has nothing to do with the term Christian. He has nothing to do with a tax bracket code. Christ has nothing to do Okay, with you calling yourself, you're not a Cretan, you're not stupid, you're not an imbecile, you are a child of the Christ. And neither did Christ build this entity called Christianity. The apostolic is not the offspring of the Vatican. The apostolic is not a denomination. So the term denomination means the currency out of Rome. Every denomination and every Protestant organization called evangelicalism or evangelicals, they are the offspring of Rome, but not us. We are the offspring of Yeshua of the Christ. We are the continuation of the great revival that started on the day of Pentecost, 33 AD. The ecclesiastical mafia 
post-colonization. Thank you, Apostle McNeil. But the term moat is a ritual phrase in Freemasonry, in Freemasonry, in connection to the Rosicrucians. Remember some of the paintings of Caesar Borgia holding the heart? That's from the theology of the Rosicrucians the secret society out of Rome. Thank you, Pastor Sippy. Now the term beam. The term beam, ladies and gentlemen, simply means a splinter. Now that's in the key text of Matthew, chapter seven, verses three to five, beam a splinter in your mind. Then the third term is called eye. The light of the body is the eye. The Masonic ancient manuscript, Pastor Sippy, is called the Heliwell, H-E-L-L-I-W-E-L-L, Regis Manuscript where key terms that activates curses like the term amen. Now I can say that because I've already prayed over you and I. The term amen comes from the Coptic demon god, Amen Ra. So the Holy Spirit told me long time ago, Pastor Colleen, stop saying the word amen. In the Heliwell Regis manuscript, out of both the Scottish Rite Order out of uh, Scotland and the Free Masonic Deep State out of England, it says that the term Amon Ra or Amon, A M O N, which was placed in scripture, not by God, but by Rome. It places a seal that encapsulates a hidden curse. Let me see this again. The term amen is not sanctioned by God. It's a Masonic term from the Heliwell Regis manuscript, meaning a seal that's been encapsulated on the body of the individual who said amen that causes hidden curses. This goes back to the term moat in Matthew chapter seven, verses three to five. You never heard of this before. And the term moat, M-O-T-E, is a free Masonic ritualistic term, moat, which Masons say so moat, M-O-T, Hit B, H Y T B E. So much hit B, meaning it is a Luciferic code, meaning say they pronoun he, she, they, so all per carte, C H A R Y T E. These pronouns or nothing but curses that come out of the term amen rod, amen, amen, within the Masonic manuscript of Heliwell Regis manuscript that exposes the term moat. In other words, Christ is exposing two entities in Matthew chapter seven, verses three to five. He's exposing secret societies, but he's also exposing the global Luciferic matrix. Oh, Pastor Harris says, is an anointing. The ecclesiastical order, I have to expose them all. See, this is why these devils are after me, Pastor Sam and Pastor Leslie, but no weapon that's formed against me. Say that in Genesis chapter five, verses one to five. 
Also in the Healy Well Regis manuscript that goes back to the 1500s out of England is a poem called Old Charges. That Old Charges is a part of the Healy Well Regis manuscript connected to the word moat that Christ exposed in Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 to 5. Every Masonic manuscript in history has a papyri called the vellum pages. Vellum, V-E-L-L-U-M. There are 64 vellum pages as a part of the Healy Well, H-E-L-L-I-W-E-L-L, Regis Manuscript of Masonic History. The term vellum, it represents that air is not present within the fibers of a papyri or page or paper where the page becomes translucent. Again, the page called vellum paper becomes translucent. Lucent technologies, which was first called Lucifer's technology, then changed to Lucius technologies. Now it's called Lucent technologies. Vellum paper translucent, where witches and warlocks would encode terms of curses that only a witch and a warlock could examine on a vellum paper, which had to be eight, that eight and a half by 11. It is not by accident that every single page on the average on this earth is eight and a half by 11. That goes back to the Healy Well Masonic manuscripts going back to the 1500s. And the term villum, this is where you get the term villain. Ah, villain. A villain, a killer. Villum, vitulinium, L I N U M, which means cat and also human skin. So witches and warlocks were sacrificed children and adults and used their skin as parchment. Villain, villainous, a villain. That is a, not only a moat, but a beam, a splinter in the eye of the system that is illumination. Illuminato, illuminati. It gets deeper. Remote something that is distracted. Stay there in Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. The ecclesiastical order. Is your minds blown tonight? Put up those faces if your minds are indeed blown. Can I get a drink of water? Pastor Sippy, can I take my time? Listen. I thank God for Pastor Sippy. I thank God for all of you because you guys know how to slow the bishop down. Listen. As a side note, have you ever wondered about the meaning of the, of the tattoo? Thank you, Pastor Ellis Ewing. Thank you, Pastor Rick and Pastor uh, Sippy. That the tattoo on the back of Hunter Biden. The tattoo on the back of Hunter Biden 
is a schematical map of Finger Lakes, New York. Now, why would, now think about this now. Why would the son of a fraudulent president have Finger Lakes in upstate New York region, south of Lake Ontario, for the past 60 years, pedophilia and child trafficking has been taking place in upstate New York, south of Lake Ontario, called Finger Lakes, New York. Now, if you get a chance, look up on Google Images, Hunter Biden's tattoo, Finger Lakes. Or just type in on Google.com. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Finger Lakes Travel, NY.com. Finger Lakes Travel, NY.com. Then on a separate link on Google Images. Now, Finger Lakes Travel, NY.com. I want you to type that on Google.com. But on another link under Google Images, I need you to type E.E. E. Calloway's 1966, The Original Garden of Eden. E.E. E. Calloway's 1966, The Original Garden of Eden. Also on another Google Images, In the Beginning, 1966, by E.E. E. Calloway, full audiobook, YouTube, on Google Images. In the Beginning, 1966, by E.E. E. Calloway, C-A-L-L-A-W-A-Y, full audiobook, YouTube, on Google Images. You will see on the cover of that book the schematical structure, a miniature prototype of Finger Lakes. Only the Holy Spirit could reveal this. Also on Google.com, if you can type this in, Pastor, on Colleen, on Google.com. Type in collection. Matter of fact, just type in 1966. E.E. E. Calloway's The Original Garden of Eden. I'm taking my time on this. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. 1966. Listen, E.E. E. Calloway's book, The Original Garden of Eden. It's on the Cornell University's library website. On the court, this is receipts, on the Cornell University library website under digital collections, The Original Garden of Eden by E.E. E. Calloway. On E.E. E. Calloway's book, it shows a post-fallen Eden that's now shaped like Finger Lakes, New York. I want no one on this earth is teaching this. This only comes from Christ. Cornell University's library, digital collection, E.E. E. Calloway's book, The Origin or The Original, thank you, Holy Spirit, The Original Garden of Eden, Cornell University Library, digital collections. If you look on the link 
the original Garden of Eden, Cornell University's library, digital co uh, uh, collections. If you go down to the third sentence, under the link persuasive maps, PJ mode collection. There you go, Pastor Colony. See, this is receipts. This is the show me state. Great to see you, Pastor Charity. The third link down on that Cornell University page that's right beside Pastor Colleen's name, the third link down, it says digital collections. It says persuasive maps, PJ mode collection. What Dr. Callaway was saying, that the map of a post Fallen Eden, on the cover of his book, is now the manifestation of the schematical map of Finger Lakes, New York. Oh, my God. Pastor Kirian, this is, oh, my God. You see how deep this is. How many of you, who oh, are feeling anointing here, have heard of the term ecclesia? <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm taking my time tonight. This thing makes anyone sick. You're right, pastors. It, the, the darkness is on another level. Thank you, okay, as Rochester, New York is direct, directly off of Lake Ontario. Finger Lakes is also the cover of the book, of the 1966 book, The Original Garden of Eden by E.E. E. Calloway. You've been taught a lie. I've been taught a lie that the term ecclesia is of Christ that is a straight up lie. History is a lie, Pastor Sam Jr. The term ecclesia did not come from Christ nor the apostolic apostles of the gospels. Divine revelations tonight, Pastor Sheila. The term ecclesia comes out of the Greek Empire in 621 BC from the Greek lawgiver, a warlock by the name of Dracu, D R A C O. Ecclesia means the gathering of those summoned. You see, apostolics are not summoned. Demons are summoned. Witches are summoned. Warlocks are summoned, but not the apostolics. Great to see you, Pastor Tia Bree, my daughter, and Pastor April, my daughter, and Pastor Godsky. Oh, this is a rabbit hole. Wait a minute now. So you're calling, not you guys, but... Many parts of the body of Christ, especially, I hate to call it, in black ministries, not just them, but most of the body of Christ, not all, they have attached themselves to a Greek mythological system of the gathering of those summoned. In ancient Greek antiquity, through the writings of Homer and the Odyssey of Homer, the teaching called the Homeric Agora, A-G-O-R-A, -A, and Agora is a gathering place of witches and warlocks in ancient Greece to this day. It's called the Ecclesia. 
Christ has nothing to do with Ecclesia. Christ has nothing to do with the Homeric Agora summoning of witches and warlocks. The term Ecclesia also means a side nod. S-Y-N-O-D, side nod, where a caucus of two boles, boles was summoned, going back not just to Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates, but also going back to Demosthenes, the orator who also built the first underground pedophilia child trafficking network of Dumbs, who died in 322 BC. And the number 322 is the number on the seal of the skulls and bones, 322. The Black Caucus is controlled by the Caucasus Mountains. I want you to hear me tonight. This is not black and white. The Black Caucus today, Boulets are controlled by the Caucasus Mountains. In Greek antiquity, the Greek state of historical politics in Greek culture, the term ecclesia also means a think tank. The apostolic body is not a think tank. The apostolic body is not the goddess Circe. In 621 BC, it gets deeper. It's called Draco's Day. In Greek history, the Greek lawgiver Draco, from whence we get the term draconian laws, created the draconian constitution in 621 BC. And from the term draconian law, we get the term drastic measures. Drastic measures comes from, is the legal offspring of the term draco, draconian laws, drastic measure, draculate, dracula, trachea. Before we go into the body of the text, Let's quickly lay the foundation of Marja 1, Volume 1, the Ecclesiastical Order post-colonization. Stay there in, Matt, in um, Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, and including keep a marker in the key uh, text, in the key verse of Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 to 5. Is your minds blown tonight? It's bloodletting. There you go, Pastor Deborah Watts. The drastic measures of draconian laws created in 621 BC through the Greek lawgiver Draco, who designed the Greek term public, publius, and excuse my language, pubic hairs. That's where the term pubic comes from, publius, public. Draconian Laws, 621 B.C., Draco. The Draconian Laws were written in the blood of children, adolescents, and adults. It was the lawgiver Draco in Greek mythology, in Greek antiquity, who came up and concocted the phrase Ecclesia. See, when you come into this class, everything you've been taught has got to go out the window. Listen, the only thing you must bring is God's word. 
Now the text after one hour, four minutes and 45 seconds. Or module one, volume one, the ecclesiastical order. Oh my. The ecclesiastical order post-colonization. Genesis chapter five, verse, verse one. This is the book, the document of the genetical code of Adam, the generations of Adam, in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Stop right there. The term ecclesia, a think tank summon. It also represents the term universality, of the Roman Catholic Church. I'm gonna say something radical. Prior to the 321 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, the term church did not exist in the Holy Scriptures. When Christ spoke to St. Peter, upon this rock, not Peter, but Christ, Petra, master rock, while Peter is Petros, a small stone, Christ is Petra, a master rock. So he commanded St. Peter in Matthew, chapters between chapters 16 and 18, upon me, Peter, upon Christ, Upon this walk, I shall build, not so say, not church, but the body of the Christ. God is the rock. That's right, Pastor Rick. The term church is not an apostolic term. Allow the apostle to teach you. The term church is a Roman term called circe, C-I-R-C -C apostrophe E. Circe, ladies and gentlemen, was the first witch of Greek mythology. Circe means circus. Thank you, Pastor Rick and Pastor Evangelist Foss. Church means Circe. Circe means a circus, but also the term Circe means odyssey. Wait a minute. So the body of the apostolic is not a circus. The body of the apostolic doesn't serve the goddess of Greek in Rome, Circe, and the body of the apostolic of Christ it's not an odyssey. No one's teaching this. Circe is the first witch of Greek mythology history that's mentioned by Homer as Circe is the goddess that absorbs. Absorbs what? Global energy. This is heavy. The world has been lied to. Circe, the global goddess of seduction, a circus, an odyssey that absorbs the energy of nations. She is the first witch of all, not just Greek mythology, but all global mythology. The term Ecclesi, C E W C L E S I, means to be summoned. It means a think tank where those in the inner circle of both Greece. In Rome, also called the Circle or Circe, were summoned to the Agora in Athens, Greece, once a year on the 25th of December. <laughs> Christ. 
Christ was not born on December 25th. Christ was born during the time of the harvest, actually on October 7th. What is so interesting about October 7th that Christ was born on, Pastor Colin? That is the time that the state of Israel was attacked. Interesting. So Ecclesi means those that are summoned. Circe, mother goddess, is a draconian constitution of Christians or Christianity, which the truth of the apostolic has nothing to do with. Now do me a favor. Pastor Colleen, if you can, type on google.com the following words. Circe, C-I-R-C-E, then dot, dot. The first witch of Greek mythology mentioned by Greek city time. Circe, C-I-R-C-E, the first witch of Greek mythology mentioned by Greek city time. Times an opt ed written by the Greek City Times two years ago. It shows the photo of the paradigm of church, sir. Say that Christ has nothing to you see. Christ has anointed me to bring about the greatest revolution in history since Pentecost. And Pastor Colleen, if you can find that link, put it up. Uh, Sir Saint, the first witch of Greek mythology mentioned by Greek City Times. On that link, it talks about the writings of Homer. Thank you, Pastor Carl. See, this is the show me that you got to show people. Homeric agora, and there are bars of soap, lotions, oils, and potions. And that's why some years ago, if you guys remember quickly, the Holy Spirit told me, Bishop, do you know what the cause of your migraine headaches are? What is it, Lord? He said... You've been purchasing oils that you got from witches that you didn't know they were witches on the streets of Harlem. Now, I'm not calling uh, our people in Harlem witches. What I'm saying, I found out that oil sold in Harlem, not all, but a great percentage, many of these oils sold to men, women, and children or made from the composition of crushed fingernails of witches. I threw that stuff out, never had a mind grain since. Stay there in Genesis 5 and 1. The ecclesiastical order. The ecclesiastical order. Post-colonization. The term ecclesi. Is also a boule. You had two different types of boules in the Greek government. The political boule that was protected and served by the religious boule of dark Grecians. That Christianity, according to that link, that pastor Colleen put up, Sir Saint the First Witch of Greek Mythology, mentioned by Greek City Times. Christianity is a Roman cult. I want you to hear me. Christianity is a Roman cult that became a sect, S E C T that has now called itself the Ecclesia. We are the apostolic body of Christ 
and not a Roman cult called Christianity. The works of Homer, Homer Agora, ritualistic initiations of the Ecclesia goes back to the 621 BC laws of Draco, Draconian laws, from whence you get the term to ingratiate, initiate to ingratiate. It means breaking down the composition of flesh. Every time you say the term uh, ingratiate, you're bringing a curse. Now, I can say it because I've already prayed over us. We are protected by the blood of the Christ. If you look online on ancient origins, witchcraft at the Agora, Athens revealed in new studies. Witchcraft at the Agora, Athens revealed in new study. It's on the Ancient Origins website. Updated the 1st of June, 2021 at 00.52 time by Ashley Cowie, C-O-W-I-E. You see, El Paso OKS, we call Christianity the cult. In these Christians, they got angry. You know why? Because you are agitating their demons. It gets deeper. Thank you, Pastor um, uh, Colleen. So Ecclesia, under Greek and Roman law, is a group curse that's inscribed on Greek vessels ships, buildings, and bodies. Agora, going back to the term Ecclesia, is described as the ancient art of magic. Oh, Lord. Wait a minute now. Is described as the ancient art of of magic, curses, and supernatural spells, incantations, five ways to create calamity in the ancient world. Listen, it's right there, right beside Pastor Colleen's name, that link. Five ways, this is from the term Ecclesia, five ways to create calamity in the ancient world. Circe, the Roman term for church. You're not church. You are the body of the Christ. The ecclesiastical order, post-colonization. Stay there in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 quickly. The term agora, A-G-O-R-A, is also the name of a demonic goddess, Pastor Colleen, in Greek mythology, from whence you get the medical term agoraphobia. Agoraphobia, A-G-O-R-A, phobia, which is a type of anxiety disorder that came up out of the term ecclesia through Circe, the Roman church. It gets deeper. Type of anxiety disorder, kundalini. I'm going to say something radical. Solomon did not term one of his books called the Ecclesiastics. It was called the wisdom of Solomon, but what Rome did through Constantine and his homosexual lover, Pope Sylvester, at the 325 BD conference, where 365 bishops were summoned to Central Turkey, removed the 
original name of that particular book from the wisdom of Solomon to the Greek Roman term, ecclesiastics. Now the term astical, ecclesiastical, we've been bamboozled, okay? But we are not gonna be bamboozled anymore, Pastor Rick. Now the term astical, ecclesiastical. Astical means article, a composition that is nonfiction and fictional at the same time. An article of clothing. It gets deeper. It's crane time, Pastor April. The term abstract means astical. And astical for ecclesiastical means aristocrat, aristocracy, the system of the serpent. Ones who are summoned as a think tank, giving the articles of incorporation called the ecclesia. It in integrating luciferic technological thinking into Jerusalem. This is heavy. It gets deeper. So in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, is the genetical offspring of Adam. Stay there. The term begat in Genesis 5, is a post-fall Adamite term. It just doesn't mean to give, to conceive and to give birth, but the term begat can be transliterated to the Arabic term mafjol. M-A-F-J-A-L, which means mafia. Wait a minute, wait. You're not ready for the, wait a minute. So the term begat, it just doesn't mean to, to conceive and to give birth to. If you take the term begat and write it rabbinically from right to left, because Hebrew is written from right to left, you get a Persian term, Tagib. Well, what is Tagib? T-A-G-E-B. Tagib means mafioso. It's not an Italian word. It's actually a Persian term, mafioso. The transference of a new kingdom that's a counterfeit kingdom from the serpent. Listen, wait a minute. Then you got people. Why, why, why does it take Bishop Solo? Then this class is not for you. You see, you have to have the patience to listen to foundational teaching, okay? Oh, this is deep, real jazzy, okay? Pastor, real jazzy, you see? But so you have to have the patience. People just want to rush it. And then the meal won't taste good at the end because you rushed it. Wait, it's the serpentine mafia, Pastor Leslie, the ecclesiastical mafia post-colonization. Deeper than keep sweat. <laughs> That's right, FM. Stay there in Genesis 5 and 1. So the term begat rabbinically means a genetical reproduction of the fall. Prior to Adam's fall, there was no such term as beget or begotten because man did not fall until Genesis 3 and 6 or 3 sixes. 
Now, from Genesis 3 and 6 to today, you get the term begat, to give. The Arabic term, mafjal, M-A-F-J-A-L, mafioso, to swagger the mafia. It gets deeper here. Eight. 18 billion people, 18.1 billion people are born in history, born, begat, with a mafioso serpentine nature. Oh, well, you got to watch this three to four times over a pastor call, calling. So wait a minute now. It means to transfer, to translate, to transliterate mafioso. Or what is called Casa Nostra, Casa Nostra, our thing, our summoning. Nostros, Nostra, Casa Nostra, our summoning, our thing. This is what the serpent wanted from the beginning was to replicate himself generationally through the fall of Adam. This is wisdom, Pastor Sam. So in Genesis chapter five, verse two, and male and female created he them. Stop right there. now. Nowhere in scripture, Did it say that the woman was created in the image of God? I want you, let, let's go back, let's go back now. In, in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, and also Genesis chapter 2, nowhere in the Holy Writ, Pastor Deborah Watts, did it say that the woman was created in the image of God? Oh, there you go, Pastor Sam. The man is created in the image of God. The woman in the beginning, in Genesis 126 and 127, was created in the image of her man who was created in the image of God. So Adam didn't get his woman from eHarmony.demon, Mash.hell, the Christian confusion mingle, and plenty of, of fish from the abyss. You don't pay for your red brothers with your MasterCard because you might end up getting a transvestite, another topic for another day. So in Genesis 5 and 2, when he talks about female. Females existed before Eve. <laughs> Let me get a drink of water here. Listen. Now, Eve doesn't come until Genesis chapter 2. So who are the females of Genesis 1, 26 and 127? During the pre-Adamite age, we could also call it the pre-Eve age or the pre-Eve of chapter three. In other words, there were females here, but there was not a woman until Eve. She wasn't called Eve until after her fall. And the reason why women had their own name before marriage because of the fall. Another topic for another day. So male and female, this is before Adam and the woman that is called Eve today. In Genesis 5 and 2, male and female created he them and blessed him and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. Now, here we go. Notice in verse number 3. For the first 130 years of Adam's post-fall life, his children, beginning with Cain and Abel, were not created in Adam's image. Because in Genesis 5 and 3, 
Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. This was after both Cain and the death of Abel. Oh, Pastor Ty, my God. Okay. The Tartarian, listen, the Tartarian architecture in history was started in the mind of a pre-fall Adam. <laughs> I listen, I say, Lord, they're not right. Wait a minute. Who created Tartarian history? An architecture, it was a pre-fallen Adam. And that's why the deep state doesn't want you to know the truth. My brain is on fire. <laughs> Listen, Pastor Sheila. Oh, this is blown away. So you got buildings on top of other buildings, and you got cities and nations below the surface of the sea. Oh, here we go, Pastor James. Keep a marker in Genesis 5 and 3. Up until the age of 130, his children were not in the image of God. Adam's children was in the image of the serpent. Well, how do you know that, Bishop? Go back to chapter number 4, verse 1. Here we go, Mendenhall. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bear Cain. Wait a minute now. The term of bear, though we're in the rabbinical Hebrew Old Testament, but the term bear in Genesis 4, 1, when properly interpreted in Persian, it comes from the Persian term Mendenhall. Wait a minute now. M E N men den hall Masonic. When you go to the Urban Dictionary and type in Mendenhall, it means when a man or a woman is mounted from behind while he or she is in a fetal position in the form of a number six on the ground, right from behind. After the deed is complete, you roll them over and see the humiliation in their eyes. There you go, Pastor Sam. Because in Revelation 12 and 4, a third part of the angelic government rebelled against Christ. That was the first coup d'etat in history. The enemy, Lucifer, tried to overthrow the kingdom of Christ. Wait a minute. So the, the oh, look at Rashard Mendenhall. If you get a chance, pass a FM. There is a video, if it's still up, of Rashard Mendenhall laying on top of the backside. Okay, what's the former quarterback's name um, that retired a couple of years ago? The Pittsburgh. What's his name? Tall white brother. Well known. He's going. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Ben Roethlisberger, Mendenhall, Rashard Mendenhall, when Ben Roethlisberger is on the field, on the ground, chest first, he's trying to get up, but Rashard Mendenhall is butt-breaking him in a playful mood, Mendenhalling, <laughs> listen, Ben Roethlisberger is on YouTube. So in Genesis 4 and 1, Cain's father is not Adam. Cain's father is the serpent. Pre-fall Adam did not have an age. Pre-fall Adam, Pastor Goats, did not have high blood pressure. And pre-fall Adam, it gets deeper, 
did not have that object swinging between his legs. I got to be careful. I don't want to get, get a strike or be taken down. That entity that every man carries is a prototype of the serpent. I'm not calling you serpents, brothers, but what man has, what males or men have, is what the deep state calls a pinus, and I'm purposely mispronouncing it. Now, when you look at the term a pinus and rabbinically, rabbinically right it from right to left, then you get a Greek Roman term, sneenep. Sneenep in both Greek and Roman mythology was not the name of a male, but the name of a female politician. In the part that's been attached to women by the medical deep state called clitoris. In Greek and Roman mythology and Greek and Roman history, a clitoris was not the name of a female, but the name of a male god and also the name of a male politician. This is called inversion. 90% of the names that's been attached to body organs. God did not give Adam an organ. I, I want you to follow me because the term organ is the serpent. Wait a minute now. The term organ, like pipe organs in churches. So the term organ, or, or, or Bishop, I got so many organs, you have to stop saying that. Our entire language must be overhauled. That's why for the past, oh my Lord, actually going on four, four and a half years, I've been working on a new dictionary and a new encyclopedia. 90 to 95% of words that the world uses is laced with curses. So the serpent knew he would fall. So he wanted to perpetuate his language, his dialect, his speech through genetical generations. So pre-fall Adam was supernatural spirit. He did not have organs. But who play, who created the term organ as an instrument, Lucifer? Pre-fall Eve, listen, sisters. She did not have monthly periods. Pastor Sam, can I take my time? Pastor Sam, can I take my organ harvesting? You see? Because the system quickly of organ harvesting, its goal is to feed the serpent. Another topic for another day. Women did not have a premenstrual cycle prior to her fall. Well, who gave her premenstrual cycles? P Thank you, Pastor Ellis Ewing. The minstrel, who was the chief architect of supernatural music in the Ten Heavens that saturated throughout 17 trillion universes. We, uh, I said it, we got 17 trillion universes. Each universe has an earth, has a greater light that rules the day and a lesser light that rules the night. Wait a minute now. So the woman has a period where the toxins in her blood are flushed out because of God's mercy. Well, what is being flushed out of what the serpent put in her? 
I want you to hear me tonight because the closer she got to the serpent, the more pigmented she became. See, everyone cannot take this teaching. So the term Mendenhall means the number six, a prenatal position. Women, this is the reason why every child that was born since Genesis 3 and 6 to today, every child in his or her mother's womb is always shaped like the number six, a Mendenhall position inside of the woman. Then at the ninth month, the head and the feet turns upside down and the baby comes the number nine. In Matthew 6 and 9, the Lord's Prayer. So in Genesis 4 and 1, the woman was mendenhauled, and that's why she has premenstrual cycles, because the menstrual music director, Lucifer, had become his own body part called the serpent. The serpent had but broken or mended hall the woman by infecting her. And so prior to our fall, you and I did not have blood. Can, can I just teach? I know it, not, this teaching is not for everyone. To understand what's going on with TB Joshua and why he died, I'm going to break this thing down. Pastor Sippy, prior to our fall, we did not have the composition of hemophilia called blood. Where did it come from? That blood is manifested through the raping of the woman in Genesis 3 and 6. You see, prior to our fall, Pastor Sam, we were omnipresent. We did not have a height. Oh, wait, we did not need a passport because Adam was the passport. But post for Adam, he acquired a height and a weight. Pre for Adam was omnipresent. He was omnipotent, all power in Christ. He was omniscient, all knowledge. But we lost that because of our fallen state. Through the Holy Spirit, however, that is Christ. The omnipresence of God's nature is still in us. The omniscient nature of Christ is still in us. And the omnipotence, the power of Christ is still, is still in us. But Pastor Todd, you got 8.1 billion people who are hybrids. Wait a minute now. I'm a human being, but the term human means monster. When you look it up in the 1935 and 48 editions of the Ballantine's Law Dictionary, it defines human as sea monster or monster. So stop calling yourself human. That term human is nowhere to be, be, to be found in scripture. So you got 8.1 billion clones. You don't have to wait to be cloned. You're already cloned because of this flesh. Because this is not natural. This is unnatural. But you've been taught a lie. You've been taught that this is natural. This is unnatural. Or Bishop, what is natural? Your spirit in Christ. <laughs> There's clones waking up. Listen. So in the apostolic, we operate not through unnaturality, 
not through black and white and brown and yellow and red, not through race, not through creed, not through culture. Those are the elements of your unnatural fallen state. Thank you, Pastor Sippy. But we in the apostolic of Acts 2, we are operators through our natural state, the spirit of the Christ. Now keep our marker there in Genesis 5 and 3. Now we're in Genesis 4 and 1. This is prior to the birth of Seth in Genesis 5 and 3. So in Genesis 4, the Holy Spirit told me this morning, Pastor Leslie, that those children born prior to the birth of Seth were not born as the image of Adam, but were born in the image of the serpent. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Then in Genesis 5 and 3, when Adam turns, turns 130 year, years old, then that child, Seth, is incorporated as the image of Adam. Oh, this is heavy. What the serpent wants is to bring 8.1 billion people back to the fallen state of the garden that is shaped like Finger Lakes, New York, that's on the cover of the 1966 book by E.E. E. Calloway, the original Garden of Eden. That picture on that 1966 book, that map by E.E. E. Calloway, the original Garden of Eden is the fallen state of the garden post fall Adam. That is the schematical structure of what is called Finger Lakes today. That's tattooed on the back of Hunter Biden. No one is teaching this. The ecclesiastical order. See, that's why these demons come after me. They don't have nothing on me. And they come after me because I expose. These days. And you know what, uh, Pastor Deborah, Deborah Watson, Pastor Sam, and Pastor Colin, you got black folk, not all, but you got a lot of black folk, especially on TikTok, asking me, why are you always talking about black? I don't talk about black people. I talk about everyone. I have absolutely no fear, Pastor Sam. So wait a minute now. There are pastors, Pastor Harris, on TikTok telling me, stop talking about Jake's. Stop talking about peanut. And what, wait a minute, sin is sin. Oh Lord, stop right there. Keep a marker there in Genesis five and three. We're now in Genesis four and one. So the first Mendenhall child is Cain. Cain, Abel, Cannibal, cannibalism, spirit cookie. See, they don't want their little bubbles burst, okay? I had one pastor tell me on TikTok, well, Bishop, you and Uncle Tom, you're trying to keep black folk in the crab. I don't want you in the crab. I don't want you to be a crab, and I don't want you in the barrel. She, see, truth cannot be validated by ignorance. Oh, Lord, have mercy, Pastor Jennifer. Truth cannot be validated by ignorance. So in Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, these twins were the first fraternal order. Look, notice the term fraternal twins, fraternity. Cain and Abel, in Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, are the first twins who were born as heteropaternal superfecundation. What is heteropaternal superfecundation? When a mother has fraternal twins, 
The twins belong to her, but the twins, Pastor Rick, don't belong to the same father. That's demonic. And now go back to, matter of fact, the Holy Spirit says, stay there in Genesis 4, Bishop. What happens in verse 15? In Genesis 4, 15. There's that term, set a mark. Now, heterio is H-E-T-E-R-O on um, Pastor Colleen. Heterio um, paternal superficundation. And also, there's another term called ambiguous genitalia. What is ambiguous genitalia? It means a child born with two sex organs. Another topic for another day. There you go, Pastor Sam. So that term, set a mark in Genesis 4.15, Highlight the term set a mark. If you connect the word set to a to mark, it becomes a Persian term set a mark, which means caucasoid. Now I'm going to say something radical that a lot of Pan Africans, Africanists won't like, and those who are scholars in Pan Africanism don't don't use the term because the term Pan means cornucopia, a two-horned spirit or demon of Baphomet. Cain was dark or black, but because he murdered his twin brother, Cain's father is the serpent. Abel's father was Adam. Cain's mother is Eve. Abel's mother was a composition of both Eve and Lilith. If you guys remember in Genesis 3, the serpent approaches the woman as a male, as a warlock. The same serpent who approached the woman walking vertically with two arms and two legs approached the woman as a vertical entity called a male. After she falls, then that same serpent who approached the woman as a vertical male now approaches her husband, Adam, as a female named Lucifer or Lilith. <laughs> Satan is able to transform himself from male to female, back to male at the same time. These are shape-shifting spirits. You're right, Pastor Gary. The first homosexual orgy was in the garden. The first lesbian orgy was in the garden. So the woman became masculated. The man became emasculated. It's a mess, Pastor Rick. So in uh, Genesis 4.15, God set a mark or cockazoid came. Whiteness is not a curse. Oh my Lord, I'm getting drunk. Whiteness is not a curse. God Kakazoi came to protect him from the elements of what would be today the Caucasus Mountains. Now back to the text of Genesis chapter 5, verse 3. It was a layer of protection against the elements. That's right, Pastor Sam. Is your minds blown? Put up those faces if your minds are blown tonight. You're getting a world-class education. Allow the bishop to get a drink of water. Listen. Genesis 5 and 3, we're almost done here tonight. This is going to be a long series. The ecclesiastical, the ecclesiastical order post-colonization. So in Genesis 5 and 3, when Adam turns 130 years old, then Seth 
is designed in the image of a fallen Adam. Prior to the birth of Seth in Genesis 5 and 3, for the first 130 years of Adam's life, all of those past children, including Adam in, including Cain and Abel, were not created in the image and likeness of their father, Adam, but they were created in the image and likeness of the serpent. Notice the term begat in Genesis 5 and 3. The term mafioso was not a, an Italian or a Sicilian Italian term. The term mafioso was actually a Arabic Persian term. Mafjo, M-U-F-J-A-L, or some pronounce it as M-U-F-J-A-H, or L, meaning mafioso, or our hidden thing, begat to perpetuate what Adam picked up from his wife, from that which she picked up from the serpent. Now colonization, I want black folk to hear me. Colonization took place on what the deep state calls the African continent. And Pastor Harris, when you look at a skull and 33 vertebrae, the spine on Google Images, that didn't come from God. What entity was the first one that had two arms and two legs? The serpent. Because in Genesis 3.15, God says, upon thy belly shalt thou go, which means pre for Adam, his enemy, the serpent, walked vertically. So why do 8.1 billion people have two arms and two legs? You're not ready for this. The reason why 8.1 billion people have two arms and two legs, it goes back to a pre-fall state of Adam, his enemy, the serpent that walked vertically with two arms and two legs that when the wife of Adam was violated, Mendenhall, then she became the petri dish or the womb for the perpetuation of a hybrid race with two arms and two legs. Pastor Kelly, this is on another level. So say there in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, the term the begetting paradigm is a mafioso system of giving birth to the fallen state of Adam, who got his fallen state from the fallen state of his wife, which came from the serpent, it's layered. Say there in Genesis chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. In 1415, according to the Oxford reference, the timeline of European empires in Africa, if you can find that pastor calling, look it up on google.com. The Oxford reference of the timeline of European empires in Africa in 1415, a Portuguese prince named Henry, the navigator, was the first one who brought the Roman cult doctrine called Christianity. I'm coming up to TB Joshua, okay? And this prophet who calls him, calls him a prophet, Uber Angel, okay? and TD snakes. So in 1415, the beginning of this 575 year colonization of al Kibilan, which is called Africa today, the Portuguese prince, Henry the Navigator, brought forth Christianity 
in order to rate Africa, to rate them from Christ in order to be the subjugation of Rome through a Roman colonized country, Portugal. Prince Henry, the navigator, went upon the coast of Alkebelen in what would be called today South Africa, starting at the lower body of the continent. He was summoned by Rome to bring the Roman cult system of Christianity. I want you to hear me to Christian and see, I don't teach Christianity. I teach the apostolic from Acts 2. So listen, Prince Henry the Navigator brought forth a Roman cult system called Christianity in 1415. From 1415 to the year of 1990, 575 years worth of Mendenhalling the continent. In 1990, Nambia was the last country to gain independence from its European slave masters. Remember Leopold II of Belgium, who is burning in hell as we speak. On February 5th, 1885, this devil, Leopold II out of Belgium, established the Congo Free State and owns that region to this day. The Congolese people are not free. You still ran by your slave masters the Belgians or the government of Belgium. For 23 years from 1885 to 1908, in blood sucking the African people in the Congo of ivory, copper, gold, and rubber, rubber to establish the financial industrial complex out of Belgium. Leopold II, would cut off the hands of babies, adolescents, children, adults, and seniors because they could not keep up with the quota of the production of ivory and rubber and gold. Leopold II's bloodline comes up out of Rome through the Prussian Empire. His real name is Leopold Louis Philippi Marie Victor. Leopold Louis or Louis Philippi Marie Marie Victor. The bloodline of the victors. Notice the real name of King Leopold II, this devil. If you look it up, his atrocities are all throughout Google Images, where hands of African children are cut off. Leopold Louis Philippe Marie Victor. Marie. Now remember the Marie, the Maria del Grazi. The building that was used in the 1400s by this pedophile, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, to create the painting of the Last Supper, which the woman in the which the individual in, in the middle is not Christ. It's a woman, listen, by the name of Julia Farnese with the G. On her right-hand side, you've been taught with St. John, but in reality, it was the daughter of Julia Farnese, an adolescent woman by the name of Laura Farnese. It gets deeper. 
Lord Farnese portraying John in the Last Supper painting was the illegitimate child of Pope Alexander VI. It gets deeper. And all of those so-called apostles in the Last Supper painting were not the true apostles of Christ going back 2,000 years ago in the Gospels. They were rapists and pedophiles and killers let out of the present industrial complex in the Roman Empire through the edict of Pope Alexander VI to pose as apostles. You've been lied to. Yes, the Last Supper took place with the true Christ and the twelve apostles, but not through a whore named Julia Farnese, not through an illegitimate child plain John by the name of Laura Farnese, and not with these fraudulent killers and murderers portraying the apostles in the painting by Leonardo da Vinci of the Last Supper. In the building which da Vinci, listen, use was a homosexual brothel, a lesbian brothel, and a brothel for children called the Maria del Grazie. You have been scammed. You've been lied to. It is my responsibility to open the eyes of your understanding to teach you the true Christ of the Gospels. Yes, you of the Christ. Stay there in Genesis chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, including in the key text tonight in Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 to 5, the ecclesiastical order post-colonization. Here's the bloodlines. Now, I can wait till Tuesday if you're too tired. <laughs> You know, one of my one of my staff members sent me, okay, an email today out of New York. You know, Sister Lisa, she, Sister Lisa, she says, "Listen, Bishop, stop teasing us. Stop saying, okay, you can wait till next week if you no. Let me keep teaching. Thank you, Pastor Sam. The bloodline of Leopold the second." The bloodline of the Victor bloodline goes back to the year of 1500. The Victor bloodline out of the Prussian Empire owned slaves out of the Congo, a bloodline out of the Congo called the Timotope bloodline. Now, follow me closely. The Timotope bloodline, T-E-M-I-T-O-P-E. -E. So I'm asking my, my, my staff back in New York, okay, what does this have to do with the ecclesiastical mafia? They said, Bishop, keep reading what, what we've sent you. So the Marie Victor bloodline through the King Leopold bloodline, the second, going back to 1500, out of Prussia, occupied also what would be called today the Congolese state in Central Africa. The Timi Tope bloodline, T E M I T O P E. also came out of a Nigerian bloodline called the Balagun bloodline, B-A-L-O-G-U-N. The Balagun bloodline out of Nigeria were integrated into a bloodline called the Mudzenri. Wait a minute. Mudzenri. M-U-D-Z-A-N-I-R-E. The Mudzenir bloodline out of Tanzania 
also owned by the Victor bloodline out of the Prussian Empire that would produce 300 years later King Leopold II. It gets deeper. The Timotope bloodline, the Balagam bloodline in the Mud, Zanir, Z A N I E bloodlines, were all owned by both the Prussian Empire because of slavery and later owned by the bloodline of the King Leopolds out of Belgium. My staff had said today in a WhatsApp video call that the Timmy Topi bloodline, the Balagon bloodline, and the Mud Zanir bloodline, which I'd never heard of these bloodlines, were produced TB Joshua, were produced Hubert Mud. Zanier, who calls himself Prophet Hubert Angel, who are also a part of the African ecclesiastical mafia. I'll explain that. The bishop was invited going back three years ago by T.B. Joshua, one of his pastors had told him about the bishop's ministry and my teachings, which absolutely blew his mind. And I'm going to say this because no one knows this until now. Three years ago, I said to T.B. Joshua on his podcast, you got to stop what you're doing. There's a BBC documentary on the cult of Prophet T.B. Joshua. His bloodline is related to the bloodline that would produce this prophet who calls himself Prophet Util Angel whose real name is Mud Zanir, though all related because of slavery going back to the early 1500s out of the Congo by way of the Prussian Empire and later the Belgium M. They're all related. They are Illuminati preachers. I said to Prophet T.B. Joshua, I'm not here to condemn you, but God is going to kill you if you don't stop what you're doing. I've never told anyone. I, I, listen, I didn't even tell my staff, not only here in Los Angeles, but in New York. Because I promised him I would not tell if he repents. And I told him, if you do not, I want you to go Walk with me if you do not stop what you're doing and repent and be set down, God is going to kill you. So God told me, don't call it the assassination of TB Joshua. God liquidated him. Now, when did Christianity, this Roman cult, infiltrate what would be called today the African ecclesiastical mafia? Because after T.B. Joshua's death, these preachers were saying, stop talking about T.B. Joshua, okay? Let's pray for his soul. We won't talk about his crimes. This is the reason why you have mega churches in Africa that I've spoken for for the past five years on their radio shows and podcasts that they are blood sucking the people of Africa because 
of this Roman god, this Roman demon, this Roman cult system called Christianity. Rome had infected the continent with Christianity in 400 AD, <coughs> 75 years, 75 years after the 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey. Let me get a drink of water. If you get a chance, watch the BBC documentary on the cult of TB Joshua. All of it is true. Christianity infected. You see, the apostolic was already there going back to 60 AD to the apostle St. Mark, one of the original 12 apostles. Christ sent him to the continent called Alcibiades. He was martyred by the deep state of Rome, and then 480 came a counterfeit called Christianity. In order to remove the apostolic that the apostle St. Mark planted in 60 AD in what would be called today Africa. You just saw that, that, that video, FM? Is disgusting. And Pastor FM, you can put up that link. I want everyone to see this. It gets deep. Is your minds blown tonight? Put up those faces if your minds are blown tonight. The ecclesiastical order, the ecclesiastical mafia, post-colonization. On December 8th, 1487, Bartholomew Diaz, D-I-A-Z, had named the continent the Santa Maria de Cananskio. Wait a minute, Cananskio. Allow me to pronounce that, please. C-O-N-C-E-I-C-A-O. The Santa Maria de Conuncio with the A silent. It means the corporation of Rome would send missionaries. Notice the term missionary. I'm going to say something that's radical. Prior to the 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, the term missionary was nowhere to be found in scripture. I got to keep this clean. I got to walk through wisdom because who taught the woman concerning the term missionary, the serpent? You see, you thought that Genesis 126 and 127 was talking about children, multiply and replenish the earth. Wait a minute, listen. God is not talking about children in Genesis 126 and 127. Children don't come until after Adam's fall in Genesis 3. So what was God talking about in Genesis 126 and 127 of multiplying there you go, Pastor FM, and replenish the earth. He's talking about spiritual creativity, the pre-Adamite age. In 1487, Bartholomew Diaz called the continent Santo Maria de Conecio with the A silent. Remember the Maria del Guaxi in Rome, the Last Supper painting. Bartholomew Diaz wanted to introduce same-sex marriage among the African people. This goes back to 1487. Look at this, Pastor Mark. Long before there was, there was a witch named Kamala and long before there was a, a devil named Joe Biden who are trying to butt 
outbreak, Uganda and Nigeria and the Congo, that unless you support, unless you support the LGBTQRSTUV, WXYZ, unless you support them, we will withhold billions of dollars worth of AIDS, worth of finances, okay? And we will put embargoes upon. You see, this is wickedness. So listen, to presidents of the Congo, Nigeria, and Ghana, don't capitulate to these devils in Washington. It gets deeper. Say there in Genesis chapter five, verses one to five, as we come in. So after 1487, then Christianity had infected the continent by removing the truth of the apostolic from Acts chapter two, verse 38, to incorporate a cancer called Christianity that has nothing to do with Christ. If you go back to 632 AD, the death of Muhammad, you see, Islam was created by Rome. I want you to hear me. Islam was created by Rome. A nun by the name of Khadija was summoned by Rome in order to travel back to Arabia. It wasn't called Saudi Arabia because the term Saud is a fabrication. The house of Saud are crypto Kazarians who came up out of, listen, Turkey, who created the cryptocurrency. I'm not talking about Jews, okay? Don't give us a strike, uh, you two. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about Israelis. See, you and I, we are Israelites. They are Israelis. They are our brothers and sisters, but they are not the original Israelites. Another topic for another day. After the death of Muhammad in, six, let's say in 632 AD, then later in 698 AD, in 698 AD, Islam subjugates the continent not to Islam, but to Rome, because Rome is the father of Islam. I know a lot of my Muslim brothers and sisters, they don't want to hear this, but Islam did not come from God through a revelation that he gave Muhammad. Muhammad is a creature of Rome. And there are what they call satanic verses in the Quran in the 53rd surah or the ch 53rd chapter of the Quran called the satanic verses that Muhammad thought that God gave him the revelation, but in reality, it was Luciferic revelation in the 53rd surah or chapter of the Quran that gave that knowledge to Muhammad. So Islam was created by Rome in 16 AD as the military industrial complex that were served the interests of Rome so that Rome can have access to Jerusalem. You notice that, Pastor Gary, why Islam never attacked Rome? Because Rome is their mother and Rome is their, that's interesting, Pastor Gary. In my conclusion, the ecclesiastical order, the ecclesiastical mafia, post-colonization. The bloodlines of the Timi Topo, the Balagon, B-A-L-O-G-U-N, the Mud Zaneers, M-U-D-Z-A-N-I-R-E, also related to the a Decini bloodline, A D E S I N A, through rape 
out of the bloodline of the Leopolds out of both the Prussian Empire and the Belgium Empire. In other words, these preachers in Africa don't know that their bloodline is connected to a killer and a devil called King Leopold II, whose real last name is Marie Victor. <laughs> Listen, see, they don't want to debate me because they know I will expose them in my conclusion. The bloodline of the Adesini, the Timotope, T-E-M-I-T-O-P-E, the Balangu bloodline, B-A-L-O-G-U, the Mudzineer bloodline, M-U-D-Z-A-N-I-E-R, in connection to the Marie Victor bloodline out of the Prussian Empire and through the Belgian Empire, through King Leopold II are also related by incest to the Mazzini bloodline out of Rome that were produced Giuseppe Mazzini, who in 1831 created the Italian Sicilia Mafia. The Mazzini bloodline runs the NBA in the Medici bloodline, okay? Here's your hip cop crime syndicate, Pastor Sam. So wait a minute. So Joseph, listen, Giuseppe Mazzini, Giuseppe Mazzini wrote a letter to Albert Pike regarding a third world war. So Giuseppe Mazzini, the Mazzini bloodline, also related to the Gauterio bloodline, G-U-A-L-T-E-R-I-O, who were also created the mafia out of Italy, all related through slavery, owning that what would be called the bloodlines of the Adesina, the Timotopi, the, Bolo, the Bologu, and the Mazenir bloodline, who is T.B. Joshua, in this man calling himself Prophet Uterel Angel. They're all related, they don't know this, to the bloodline to one of the most vicious colonizers in history, King Leopold II. It gets deeper here. Is your minds blown? Put up those faces if your minds are blown tonight. In my conclusion, how many of you have heard of Operation Bumblebee? Oh, Lord have mercy. You're not ready for this. Wait a minute. Operation Bumblebee started in July of 1946, and we're told it ended in July of 1948. It started out for the creation and the dissemination of weapons of mass destruction that was built not only at Fort Detrick in Maryland, the home of the National Security Agency, but also through Operation Bumblebee, Boeing and Northrop um, Grunham, okay? Lockheed Martin, a lot of them moved their plants to Africa, going back to the 50s, 50s 60s, and 70s. Operation Bumblebee was not just for the creation of weapons of mass destruction through un in incontinental uh, ballistic missiles. But Operation Bumblebee is an operation for the trafficking of children out of the Congo, out of Nigeria, out of Niger, out of Ghana, out of Tanzania, 
out of South Africa, out of Egypt. Operation Bumblebee today through the Central Intelligence Agency with the help of some of the corrupt leaders in Africa who are nothing but pawns for the 13 families. Operation Bumblebee, as they sold off our people into slavery, our own people. Do you guys remember a few years ago on um, this witch, Nancy Pelosi, this demon, Chucky Schumer, went down on one knee, Mississippi, in the capital rotunda wearing their kente cloth, but the kente cloth was created by the Ashanti tribe out of Ghana. And the Ashanti tribe in the 1400s sold our people into slavery. But now you got Negroes, I'm sorry, forgive me. You got people wearing kente cloth, shea butter, okay, and going to hell. So wait a minute, so the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are two heads of the same snake. I'm not telling you to come into the Republican Party because they are witches and warlocks as well. What I am saying, if you call yourself a christ Center apostolic patriot, the man, the person to vote for is President Donald J. Trump. He's not perfect. I'm not saying that the man is perfect. But what I am saying, that he is the only one with the testicular fortitude, the size of 50 Mount Rushmore's, to say what needs to be said. This trash, Nikki Haley, she's used by the deep state, okay? And she's used by the deep state because she's controllable. I didn't know this, Pastor Colleen, that I don't know if you told me, Pastor Colleen, or someone told me, that George Soros is bankrolling Nikki Haley, but it's not going to work. Operation Bumblebee was one of the deep state goals to perpetuate child trafficking. You see, President Trump is chosen by Yeshua. Thank you, Pastor Deborah Watts. Operation Bumblebee. In my conclusion, there is an ecclesiastical mafia on the African continent blood sucking the people out of money. Not every pastor on the continent, but a great percentage of pastors who are blood sucking the people financially, okay? Whose last names, they're all chosen by the deep state. They're all related. They don't know this. And who are taken up for TB Joshua. TB Joshua had raped women Great boys. Uh, and I told him, if you don't stop what you're doing, God is going to kill you. And that is exactly what happened. Uh, Pastor, can I say this, Pastor? Say, Pastor uh, Colleen, I want to announce this. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let me get a drink of water. <laughs> oh, touch not my anointing. And do my prophets no harm. One of the students. Oh, Lord. You better hold on to your socks and pole when I tell you this. One of the students sent me an email. And my office got it first in New York. And they sent it to me, Pastor um, Colin, on last Matter of fact, this past weekend, last weekend on Sunday, and said, Bishop, the woman that was trashing you, 
through the bit shoot series exposing the cabal, she was found dead. Let me say this again. I didn't do anything. See, do you understand? Wait a minute now. The woman who created the series about the cabal. My God, and her name evades me right now, Pastor Colleen. Oh, what's her name? Lord have mercy. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. The woman, she's out of Europe someplace. And I can't, thank you, Pastor Colleen. Janet Alsabod committed suicide. I want you to hear me tonight. We are told Janet Alsabod, who was trashing the bishop, took my picture, plastered it up on her cabal series, saying that I was a member of the World Economic Forum, no receipts. She got it from Wikipedia that someone put up my name. She didn't call the World Economic Forum in Basel, Switzerland. She didn't call the World Economic Forum the American office in New York City. But trash me. One of my good friends out of Nigeria had said to me, Bishop, I wrote her an email and saying her life is on the, when you come after me, Pastor Kelly, I want y'all to hear me tonight. I didn't do anything to her. I didn't even know that Miss Awesomeball or Awesomeball, whatever her name is, that she died. One of her co-workers, listen, if they're cussing, block them. See, these demons are agitated. One of their co-workers um, had said on a big shoot video that Miss Osterbaud had some psychological problems. I never even heard of that, Pastor Kelly. They said she had some psychological problems. That That's a lie. God took her out. I said it. God took her out. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. I did not know that this woman had died. It shocked me. You see, any person, entity, entities, who came after me, they're either dead, they're in jail, prison, or they're dead. I didn't do anything. Nobody from my staff, and uh, they didn't do anything. No, not, not my security detail, not just in New York City, but my detail here in Los Angeles. When I heard the news, okay, see, Pastor Sam, I don't rejoice over that. It breaks my heart. When you look at somebody like Jesse Japolter, if you guys get a chance, Pastor Sam and Pastor Colin, do you guys remember Pastor Jody? Oh, when was it? A year, two years ago, when this mess about uh, Jesse came out and I was exposing her minions. And I said that Jesse's, let me go through this slow. Jesse Japolter's original cover of her book. If you can find that, Pastor Colleen, look it up. The Kingdom of God Comes, Empowered the Battle. The Kingdom of God Comes, Empowered the Battle. Her original cover of the book had three little girls Am I right about that, Pastor Colin? Three little girls drawing a circle on that chalkboard with pentagrams in the chalkboard. 
Jesse had said on videos and throughout Twitter that she was the little girl in the middle, Pastor Colin, and that Cisco Wheeler took the picture. Cisco Wheeler is another witch. There's no fear in me because I want to expose these devils, okay? Pastor Colleen, if you can find that, it's hard to find it, but if you can find Jesse's original book, The Kingdom of God, The Kingdom of God Comes in Power of the Battle, the original front cover is three little girls. But she lied, Pastor April. That's not Jesse in that photo amongst those three little girls, okay? Pastor calling, Pastor calling, or Pastor calling is sleeping now, no problem. You see, the little girl in the middle is not Jesse Japolter. The little girl in the middle and those two other little girls, Apostle Ty and Apostle Carlotta, that picture goes back to 122 years. So Jesse is 122 years old? I'm not blasting her. She is an old photo of Pastor Colin. And Pastor Colin, if you get time, put that up tomorrow or whenever on Twitter. So Pastor Sippy and also Pastor Sippy, she'll find this too. The kingdom of God comes in power of the battle. The original cover. Why lie, Pastor Colin? Of three little girls drawing a circle with a pentagram on, um, um, you know, inside of the circle. And Jesse never stopped being the witch. Thank you, Pastor Stacy. But the original picture that goes back to, a, to 122 years does have three little girls join a circle, but there's no pentagram in the original picture that goes back to 122 years. The Orange Publication Unit out of London, England, we tracked them down. Listen, Cisco Wheeler had helped Jesse to conduct a lie by using a photo that goes back to 122 years. She was caught in the lie passage Jan Ford. And then when the Patriots exposed her on Twitter called X, she changed the cover of the book from three little girls drawing a circle with a pentagram inside of the circle that was not in the original picture going back to 122 years. Jesse changed that cover to a new cover that she's, using, that she's using today of a little girl running in a wheat field. And then when we ask her about it, she's calling us devils. Wait a minute now. All we're asking, why did you lie to the patriots? Why did you lie to America? And why have you lied to the, especially she's lying to women? And Jesse is targeting broken, fractured women who are poisoned, okay? Lies from the pit, Pastor Sam. Pastor Sam, I got the receipts, okay? That's why she's blocking everyone, blocking me because she doesn't want me to expose her. Even Jeff or right on radio was asking her. She said to Jeff, well, I've, I've already answered your question. See, she doesn't want to come clean. It's receipts, Pastor Sam. And then she's coming after me because I exposed her. And she was upset with me, Pastor G. Harris and Pastor Sam. Because you guys remember on the show, um, Aquarius rising with those witches. And then Jesse got up and laughed. Okay. 
And then I was on the show, uh, George Iceman show. Okay. See, I exposed a lot of Dolly, Do Dolly Mess. <laughs> okay. A former porn star. Okay. Coming after me. I never said anything about her. Little Dolly Madison, who has over 50 aliases, whose sister is the assistant district attorney of Riverside County, California, who wants nothing to do with Madison Marquette, but that's not her real name. Okay? The state police here in California has issued a warrant for her because of wire fraud. And she's telling you, oh, she's working for the pedophilia task force at the Pentagon. It's lies, okay? Okay. The original book is in here. Oh, Pastor uh, Colin, can you put up that link? I need people to see that. Pastor Colin, put up um, just the link that so that the uh, the pastors, the patriots of Christ, can look at the original cover of her book, Three Little Girls. She she told us a lie that she was a little girl in the middle and Sister Wigger, Sis, Cisco Wheeler took the picture, but the photo goes back to 122 years. Okay, thank you, Pastor Colin. Give, take your time. And also, Pastor Colin, give us a second link of the new cover of the book she changed because she's a liar. George Iceman show, the Revere Report. You remember that, Pastor Sam? Pastor Sam, did I ever trash her on the Revere Report? No. Did I ever call her a mother of darkness? No. Did I ever, Pastor Sam, I never, never did I say that she was a mother of darkness. And never did I say that she was connected to the bloodlines that I was exposing and she got upset with me because I was exposing her body, this devil, this warlock, Lucian Greaves. Why is she in contact with the known devil? I don't know. See, she was agitated, Pastor Sam. And then that demon in her, see her little minions, these women who are broken was coming after me. I'm telling you, I told you, you better get back. So in that interview, George Iceman is two-faced. His first face live on that video that he took down, but I got a copy. He said in the video that I was not attacking Jesse. But Jesse came out and tried to stop me in the middle of the teaching by saying, are you calling me a mother of darkness? I said, no. You see, when a devil, I want you to look, I want you to really listen to me. When a devil knows that they are exposed, they will always react. Solomon said that that these people are reacting to, some, to something that I never said. She exposed herself. And ever since then, ever since then, her money dried up. You see, she, she lied concerning, she, she was telling people that was her in the first photo of the three little girls. But the photo goes back to 122 years, Jesse. And then Jesse gets this devil, this Ariel to come after me, okay? But I exposed him to, you see, anyone that comes after me, I did not know that uh, Miss Awesome Bard, Awesome Baldwin, whatever her name is, I didn't know that she died. We're told that she committed suicide. God took her out. People won't like it. I don't care. Listen, Janet came after me on fraudulent, vicious lies. That I'm a part of some, some World Economic Forum. That was nothing but a vicious lie. 
Now, where is she at now? Okay. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. On the Revere report, she got so upset with me. And Pastor Sam, you guys remember what the bishop said? I said, back off. I wasn't speaking to her. I was speaking to the demon in her. She's nothing but a witch. And that is it today after two hours, 49 minutes and 42 seconds here on the Global Spiritual Revolution, Mina Group, Los Angeles, New York, Marja 1, Volume 1, The Ecclesiastical Mafia, Post-Colonization, and I thank you. See, I spoke to those demons, Pastor Sam. And I'm telling you, Jesse Japolter is a fraud. And anyone who supports her is a fraud. Now, the people that used to host her, Pastor Sam, on their podcast, they don't want nothing to do with her. Because she's a fraud. Thank you, everyone, for being with the bishop tonight. Listen, please forgive me. I'm going to blow my nose. Forgive me. <laughs> Was your minds blown tonight? Was your mind blown? Put up those faces if your minds were blown tonight, okay? Put up those faces if your minds were blown tonight. I thank you guys. And I'm going to say this, but I'm going to save it for Tuesday. Here we go, Pastor Flo Wolf and uh, Pastor Renee and Pastor Charity. How many of you have heard of this beautiful woman who was an attorney? And I believe she won Miss America or Miss USA. Chelsea Christ. I wish I had time to. Chelsea Christ. C H E S L I E. Christ. Capital K R Y S T. She supposedly committed suicide a few years ago in Manhattan of jumping off a building. Beautiful sister, Pastor Kobe. Chelsea Chris, according to my contacts in the government, and name, their names I'm not going to say because I don't want you to hear about the bishop dying. Okay, so I'm not stupid. Blown to kingdom come. <laughs> Chelsea Chris was an attorney for a law firm out of North Carolina called the Pointer Sprell Law Firm. Pointer, capital P-O-Y-N-E-R, Sprell, capital S-P-R-U-I-L-L. If you remember one of her last videos, she said, one of the reasons why that she left law because of overbilling. She kept saying that term overbilling. Overbilling. And she called it trash. Let me use wisdom here. I'm told by my contacts in the government that this young, beautiful woman was not out in another location with chloroform. Not dead, but she was knocked out by chloroform, okay? Is it chloroform or chloroform? And that her body was transported to her apartment complex and they pushed her off. And then in her so-called, you see? See, lawyers are paid the lie, Pastor Flo. And in Sister Chelsea's will, she's given everything to her mother, Chloroform. Thank you, Pastor Stacy. 
when they brought her body to, to you know to throw off to throw off of the top of the building, she was still alive. But yet in her wheel, Pastor Sam, she gives everything to her mom, but her mom were constantly spy on her. You see, the girl was a lesbian, okay? I'm not here to condemn her, okay? But her mother was a micromanager. But nothing going to, okay? Uh, 1988, three little girl. Thank you, Pastor Colin. Uh, uh, Colin, I don't know if you got the, the link for that, but that's okay. So Chelsea Christ worked as an attorney and look it up for the Poyner, P-O-Y-N-E-R, Spreel, S-P-R-U-I-L-L, law firm out of North Carolina. And she said in one of her last videos concerning overbilling, over billing like clients, she says it was trash. A man had dated her from the law firm. Do you guys remember the, the movie called The Firm with Tom Cruise? You guys remember that movie, The Firm? And there was a law firm out of Memphis that was overbilling their clients into the millions. My sister was murdered because of what she knew about this law firm, the Pointer Spreel, Spreel Law Firm out of North Carolina. And they themselves are represented by a law firm called Perkins Coy. Perkins Coy out of Seattle, Washington, represents the Obamas, the Clintons, okay? Remember the, the Steele dossier from Christopher Steele, former MI6 agent, lied about President Trump sleeping with Russian prostitutes, and that was a lie. Perkins Coy represented, okay, the Clintons, the Obamas, and represented these trash who tried to destroy President Trump. Chelsea Christ was murdered. I'll explain that more on next Tuesday in conjunction to the ecclesiastical mafia post-colonization. So I just wanted to put that out there really quick um, the woman, and I got to be careful, the woman that handles the billing services, she's the billing services manager. I'm not going to say her name. You can look her up. But when Sister Chris had said concerning over billing and the reason why uh, Apostle Ty, that she left the pointer spread long firm was because of overbilling, and she called it trash. Thanks, uh, thank you, Pastor Colin. The pentagrams in the Japota cover have been photoshopped onto the original photo, which comes from the book New Methods of Education. Art, real manual training, nature study by James Liberty Tad in 1899, 120, 123 years ago. That's the cover. That's the picture of uh, three little girls drawing a circle, okay? That goes back to the James Liberty Tad book the 1899 book, New Methods of Education, Real Art, Real Manual Training, Nature Study by James Liberty Tad. So in other words, what this witch, Jesse, was telling you, she's 122 years old. She's lying, okay? 
How many of you was your minds blown tonight? Put up those faces if your minds were blown tonight. And I'm going to say this as well. That in the former law firm where... I got to be careful. The former law firm in North Carolina that Chelsea Chris used to work at, going back to 2020, they were under FBI investigation for overbilling. But yet, Chelsea Chris had said in one of her last videos, Pastor G. Harris, that one of the reasons why, one of the three reasons why that she left the legal um, her legal career was, she said, overbilling, and she called it trash. Someone, Pastor Kelly, took out this beautiful woman, and I'm going to do a series on the assassination of Chelsea Christ coming up in the next few days. Thank you for being with the bishop we need overbilling. That's what it is, Pastor Flo. In the movie, The Firm with Tom Cruise, there were lawyers at the this firm in the movie. They ended up dead. Thank you, God. And I'm not saying The Firm out of North Carolina, okay? Don't come after me, Pointer Sproul. Listen, I'm just telling you that this girl had said that one of the three reasons why, thank you, Pastor Sam, okay? that she left law because of overbilling, okay? And she called it trash, but she ends up dead. But we're told she took her life and we're told by her mother, oh, she had some mental problems, but there is no legal, there is no medical receipts that she ever went to a clinical psychologist or a clinical psychiatrist. Thank you for being with the bishop tonight. We need your financial help. Uh, thank you for putting up that link, uh, Pastor Sam. Please put up everyone right now, uh, all of the moderators, please put up our PayPal link, which is paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. There it goes. It's right under Global Spiritual Revolution uh, Media Group. Okay, with black letters with the yellow or gold background, take this, ladies and gentlemen, and also right beside Pastor Sam's name, take this or your finger, whether you have a desktop, laptop, um, Apple tablet, Chrome tablet, uh, Android iPhone, or an Apple Watch. Click on PayPal. Follow my finger. Just go to PayPal. Go to PayPal right there, right there, right beside Pastor Sam's name, please. Uh, right now, click on paypal.me forward slash GSRR Mina Group. Paypal.me forward slash GSRR Mina Group. When you give unto the Lord, he'll give you more to give. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom, okay? God will give you double for your triple, triple for your pain. Right beside Pastor Sam's name, his name right beside Pastor Charity's name. Uh, praise God. Right beside Pastor Sippy's name. Click on that link. You don't need a PayPal account. Ladies and gentlemen, click on that link. And after you click on the link, then click send. Okay. Woo! My mind is simulated with the truth of enlightenment. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Pastor Stephanie Hibbler, that is, you blew my mind, uh, Pastor Stephanie. My mind is simulated with the truth of enlightenment. All right, God bless you, Pastor Colin. I know it's late there in Scotland. Everyone, please, paypal.me forward slash GSR Media Group. No one's teaching this. And if they're telling you they're teaching this, they're lying. Plant two gifts. I don't use the term so. Here at Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group, Los Angeles, New York, we don't use the word so because the term so or so is the name of a female hog or pig. So we use the term plant. Plant the Lord's tithe. Whether your gross is 3,000, if your gross is 3,000, the Lord's tithe is 300. If your gross is 2,000, the Lord's tithe is 200. If your gross is 1,000, the Lord's tithe is 100. 
click on the PayPal link right now. You should be like popcorn, okay? Popcorn, okay? Don't tell me you got to pray about it. Listen, it is an apostolic commandment. Not by, not by the bishop, but through the Christ. Click on paypal.me forward slash GSR media. And after you click on the PayPal link, click send, plant the Lord's tithe first of the gross of your weekly. Some of you get checks every week, every two weeks, once a month. And after you plant the Lord's tithe in the same transaction, plant $100 or more. You should be like popcorn, 100, 200, 300, 500, 800. Three of you give a thousand, okay? Um, you know, we got multi-millionaires who are pastors and who are supporters, okay? But we only ask them for a thousand dollars a month, but they give a thousand a week. Do that right now, okay? But the rest of you, the rest of you, go to paypal.me forward slash GSR Aminiku, plant the Lord's time. And after you plant the Lord's tithe in the same transaction, plant $100 or more, 200, 300, 500. Also, we have a cash app, praise God. Uh, Pastor Sippy, if you can put up our cash app, and I'll put it up as well. Okay, and we'll let you guys go because I know it's late there. Our cash app uh, link, ladies and gentlemen, is dollar sign, then global revolution one. Dollar sign being Global Revolution One. That's our cash app link. Okay. Also, you can send your checks uh, in your money orders in care of uh, Bishop Larry Gators. Okay. Uh, praise God. In care of Bishop Larry Gators. And that is P.O. Box 161 Lomita, California. Lomita. Uh, California. And the postal code quickly, ladies and gentlemen, is 90717. Okay. Um, Bishop Larry Gators, P.O. Box 161, Lumina, California, 90717. Okay. When you're writing out your money orders, um, don't go to Toys R Us or Walmart or Walgreens or Western Union. Get your money order from your local post office. But the rest of you, the rest of you, Go to paypal.me and all of the monitors can put that up tonight and we're going to end it here tonight, okay? I will not be late like this again, okay? Um, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. It's right under Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group with black letters with a yellow or gold background. Take this. I don't like, I don't like to call this mice or rat or whatever. Take this, okay, or your finger and click on paypal.me forward slash GSRR media group, okay? Never had PayPal until tonight. Thank you, Pastor Colin. Oh, thank you, sir, okay? Thank you, Pastor Sue Stedding, for your obedience. Uh, um, you know, obedience is better than sacrifice uh, and to hearken than the fatter rams. And yes, I'm telling you, this, this young girl, uh, Miss Chelsea Chris was murdered. Do not believe the lies of the attorneys involved. Do not believe the lies of law enforcement. That girl was murdered. And I'm going to expose why she was murdered on next week, okay? Thank you for being with the bishop tonight. And I may even teach about her on Tuesday. I may teach um, concerning the assassination of Chelsea Christ, the assassination of Chelsea Christ, right beside Pastor Sam's name, right beside Pastor Charity's name, click on the link. Do that right now. And after you click on PayPal, click send. Don't click request, click send and plant the Lord's tithe. And in the same transaction, plant $100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, I feel strong. I thank God for. The last two weeks, I had to take care of a lot of obligations, praise God, here in Los Angeles. But I thank you guys for your patience. And I'm, do I look rested? I don't know if, if I look rested or tired. I think I look rested. And God willing, uh, the bishop will be 61 years old next month on February the 11th. Thank you, Pastor Gina Harris. Thank you so much. 
woman of God, thank you, okay? Uh, thank you guys for your obedience. No one is teaching this, okay? Um, Vince, Mimet, yeah, I heard Pastor Sam. Yeah, I think Pastor Sam sent me something on Vince McMahon. Was that the, what's that called? The uh, WWF, or I don't know, the, the wrestling, the World Wrestling Federation WWF. Uh, what was it about him, Pastor Sam? He got caught up in child trafficking or something, okay? Oh, thank you so much, Pastor Sippy. Thank you. Thank you so much, my daughter. Love you in Christ. You see you see what's happening now? What's his name, um, the rapper today? Fat Joe? Uh, not, not, I think Heaven D's is, is dead. Is it Fat Joe? Uh, th thank you so much, Pastor Sippy. Love you, my daughter. Thank you. Thank you so much. All of these people are getting caught up in uh, child trafficking, raping. Um, the Rock Johnson, he's being investigated uh, because of rape allegations. It's only rape allegations, okay? But he's being exposed. The Rock Johnson, uh, P. Diddy. Thomas Dexter Jakes, okay, Ofa Winfrey, they're being exposed, okay? Beyonce, she's going down. Gay-Z, I'm sorry, Jay-Z, he's going down. They're all going down. And everything is going down but the word of God, okay? Rico charges, rack and tear. These are federal charges, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Woo, New Hampshire's about to blow, Pastor Colin. You see President Trump won New Hampshire. Now little Nikki Haley raised a lot of money. She's done, okay? God is this, God is exposing. You know, Pastor Sippy, this is the year of the great exposure. My brother who I love, uh, uh, Brother Cat Williams, uh, I would love to have him on my radio show. would love to have him here. Uh, you know, talking to him on a global masterclass. He doesn't know me. I don't know him personally. He's never met me. I've never met him, but he is a patriot, Pastor Rene, and he's exposing everyone, okay? Nikki Haley is not her real name. Is her last name Pachit or something? What is Nikki Haley's real name, okay? Oh, I gotta get Cat Williams and and my staff said, let Bishop get him on. We don't care if he cusses. Now let them, <coughs> well, I do care. But the thing is, see, Cat Williams is a man's man. Cat Williams is a true man of God who loves Christ, who loves his babies, his daughters, his sons, his, his babies. They tried to take away his children, but it didn't work, okay? Woo! Uh, Carrie Lake. I don't trust Carrie. I don't hate her. I don't trust her. One minute you're against Trump. All of a sudden now you support him. Okay. Uh, it's an enemy at a random wall, but that sounds like it's more um, Pajabi. Okay. See, she's a plant. Okay. Nikki Haley is a plant. Who should be vice president? I think um, the governor of the state of South Dakota, Governor Chrissy Nome. I like her. I respect her. Uh, she's a true Christ-centered patriot and apostolic, and I would love for her to be vice president. But Cat Williams on the Club Shay Shay podcast, Shannon Sharps, that brother was exposing. You know why they hate him? And you know why they hate me and they hate men of God like me, like Kat, because we're not wearing a dress and we refuse to bend over. <laughs> we'll never wear a dress and I will never bend over. Do you understand? That's her real name, Pennsylvania. Okay, Nikki Haley. I like Pat, I like Governor Chrissy Nome. So, uh, uh, President Trump, I know you watch the Bishop every week. Y'all didn't know that, okay? And uh, I, I'm going to tell you a position. I, I, you know, I'm not supposed to be talking about talking about that. 
when Trump gets back in office, the bishop's really going to be busy, okay? Um, you see, Nikki Haley is a rat. Nikki Haley, that's what she is. Okay. God bless you. It's late. Good night, everyone on the East Coast. Oh, my God. Lord, it's what, 1251 there? God bless you guys, okay? They can't hide. They can't ride your back if you're not bent. Come on, Pastor Jennifer. They can't ride your back if you're not bent, okay? Woo! Jim, best for iron. Uh, anemic support. Thank you so much. We're going back old school, Pastor Kobe, for all nine. Thank you guys. Okay. Love Cat Williams, you know, and uh, and, and Oprah Winfrey. You know, <laughs> you know, Apostle Ty, Apostle Carlotta, Oprah Winfrey is suing Cat. Okay. Cat said, okay, I dare you. I double dare you, but she's not going to do it because she'll get exposed. Okay. Thank you guys. No fear in the bishop. My job is not to kiss the behind of the deep state. I don't care who likes me or not. My assignment is to call those things which be not as though they were. It is to expose this global Balfamet, heptagon, octagon, septagon. Balfamet Deep State. I like Byron Donalds. I like him, Skyron. Okay. But I, I I don't, I just don't think he's ready to be VP. But who am I? Okay. I'm not a politician. I think Governor Christy Nome is ready because she's a governor. But I think uh, I like him. I like Byron Donald. He is a true patriot. Byron, I like Byron Donald. I like him. He's a true man of God, and I think he would make an excellent senator. And I think he will make an excellent president one day. It's just not time yet, okay? Uh, but I think um, Governor Christy Nome will be, uh, should be, and will be uh, President Trump's VP. Okay, uh, Nikki's parents' last name is Ajit Singh Randhawa, and Randhawa Randhawa is a uh, demoness goddess in Hindu mysticism, okay? Um, I like the governor of, of, of the state of Texas. I like him, okay? Uh, I know Biden doesn't like him, but, um, you know, he definitely wants to, um, you know, clean up the border, okay? Um, I like him. If I'm and again, I'm just me. If I'm President Trump, okay, um, I would definitely uh, uh, tab, uh, tab or ask Governor Greg Abbott to be on his be a part of his cabinet, the Trump administration. I like him, but my VP choice for President Trump is Governor Christine Noem. Uh, do you guys remember? Oh, I don't want to get too much. The DC sniper. Lee Boyd Malvo, the Malvo bloodline. I'm going to give you a little snippet, a preview of a coming attraction. The bloodline of Chelsea Christ is related to the bloodline of the Malvos, both the Malvo family, the DC sniper, and a young, beautiful world girl who supposedly took. Uh, committed suicide, but she she was murdered. The Chris bloodline were a family of Scottish slave owners along with another slave owner family, okay, out of England who came to the States in the late 1600s. The Malvos, wait a minute now. The Chris plantation in Mississippi, the Malvo plantation in South Carolina, they both traded slaves between each other. And I'm going to say this, the Chris bloodline of black folk called the Chris are related to the Malvos that would produce the DCs. I know it's hard to wrap your brain around this, it will go deeper. So spread the news. Julia, oh, Julia Malvo. 
Listen, she's another boule passer, Rod. Where is she? Be? Is she still on the Crack News Network? Is she still on CNN? Okay. Who was the brother who used to work at CNN um, but went to ABC and got caught up in this mess? Okay. Uh, cheated on his wife. He's with this white girl. Now, when I say white, I'm not, listen, I'm not talking about black and white. What's his name? The brother uh, who used to work for the Crack News Network who had dated, okay, on uh, Julianne Malvo, uh, not Don, not, not, not Don Sweet Tea Lemon, not him, okay? Um, <laughs> the brother who went to ABC and left his wife, cheated on his wife with this white woman who worked for um, Good Morning America on, one of the, on ABC, okay? Uh, but anyway, they're all boule devils. Thank you guys, okay? for joining the bishop tonight. I love Larry Elder. I, if I'm President Trump, uh, Pastor Thomas, I would have Larry Elder uh, to be an ambassador, okay, to be a part of my cabinet. I, it, Larry Elder would be a, a good choice to be VP, but he would not be my first choice. My first choice would be Governor Christy, uh, uh, Christy Noem. T.J. Holmes, T.J. Holmes. And he's bold now. He's got this girl. Okay. He's got this snowflake. Okay. I got to stop. Okay. This, I'm not talking about white women. Okay. He's got this woman now. Okay. Listen, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. And President Trump, we got your back in prayer. President Trump will win re election. PayPal.me for slash GSRR Media Group. President Trump, I'm telling you, it, President Trump is going after all of these devils. And that's why they're trying to take him off the ballot. But no weapon that's formed against the president shall prosper. It never said it would never be formed, but it would never prosper. Okay. Trump will crush the days of the boule. That's right, Pastor Kobe, you know. Julianne Malvo was recently on Roland Martin. Oh, Roland Martin. Okay. We represent the Lonnie. Of... Okay, let me get off of that. <laughs> Little Roland Martin whose head is crushed. Okay, stop. I, I, I'm going to be nice, okay? Um, I, <laughs> I was told <coughs> by a good friend of mine, okay, a sister, um, beautiful sister who's a pastor, Bishop, be nice to Roland, okay? We love Roland, okay? But these are gatekeepers. Butter biscuit. <laughs> Butter biscuit Roland Martin. Riding gravy trains with biscuit wheels. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for being with the bishop tonight. Okay. And, um, and pray for me. The bishop will be uh, in Vegas for the week of the Super Bowl. Thank you, guys, for being with the bishop tonight. There's a lot of work we got to do. All right, God bless you. Disease X McCracken Count. Wow. Uh, 8th of April, 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Colin. You guys have a good night. And I will not be late. Um, I was long-winded on a podcast, okay? Uh, out of Brazil, I was long-winded. And, um, you know, it was an English podcast out of Brazil. And uh, so thank you guys for your blessing, for your prayers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Jane Ford. Thank you, guys. Thank you for giving. Thank you. Thank God for Pastor Chris Harris, one of our powerful pastors here in the Long Beach, California area. Thank you, Pastor Chris Harris, for your faithful giving. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. I serve Christ first, and I serve you guys second. Okay. I am the servant of Christ. That is the greatest position that I love is being a servant of Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua the Christ. What a joy divine. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pastor Chris Black. Pastor Chris Black, you need to email me. Please email me your phone number, Pastor Chris Black. Okay. Uh, listen, I'm, um, I want you guys, my, my staff said, Bishop, don't give out your iCloud e email anymore, okay? Because people are abusing it. Instead of <laughs> emailing me wanting counseling, you're emailing me wanting me to talk about other people. Listen, stop. 
Email Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at yahoo.com. Let's do that right now. Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at yahoo.com. Pastor Chris Black in um, Vegas, please email me uh, your phone number right now. Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at yahoo.com. Good night. I am going to, I got some organic soup, meatless pastor, uh, Sam. I thank God. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Super. God bless you guys. Good night from Los Angeles, for we are raising the consciousness of man to become the consciousness of Yeshua, the Christ. Thank you so much. It's great to be back home here at Global Spiritual Revolution, Mina Group, Los Angeles, New York, to our global master class. Okay. Oh, so this Vince McMahon got added. Oh my God, too. I'm telling you, that's why these devils don't want President Trump in. But listen, they can't stop it. God bless. May heaven smile upon you. I'll see you guys on next Tuesday for a one time teaching called The Assassination of Chelsea Christ. The Assassination of Chelsea Christ. You cannot miss it. I'll see you guys Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, the Graham is a coming. It's a busy time for the bishop right now. Pray for me. I'll see you guys Tuesday early, okay? See you Tuesday. Praise God early. We thank you and we love you. Keep the bishop in your prayers. I'm on the front line. Hold me up in prayer. Hold up your brother. Hold up your bishop in prayer because I'm taking the hits in order to protect you, the sovereign saints of Yeshua the Christ. Thank you. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for the assassination of Chelsea Christ. And then the, on the following Thursday, we will teach on the assassination of Miles Monroe. Oh, my. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys Tuesday. Continue to send me videos, Pastor Sam and Pastor Catherine, Pastor Stacy. All you guys continue to send me information on Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, X, Twitter, because you're feeding me with knowledge so I can use that as a part of my lectures. God bless you. It's great to be back home here to Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group, Los Angeles. Good night from Los Angeles. I'll see you Tuesday. Have a wonderful weekend. The bishop loves you. God bless.